Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello, everyone. This is Ranger Rob or Rob Scribner, and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Yep, <laughs> it's, it's been a while. This is episode 137. Want to welcome you to the show. Thought I'd do a visual version of this, so if you're hearing the audio, please be aware that there is a YouTube version of this same show. Uh, you can find RV Talk Radio on oh, all over the place. It's on iHeartRadio, Spotify, uh, Intunes, TuneIn, uh, you name it. <laughs> it. It's all over. Uh, we're also syndicated over in uh, Hamilton Radio and, of course, Good Talk Radio. So uh, our shows are all over the place. And, of course, it's a podcast. So if you have podcast software, just search for RV Talk Radio. We have hundreds of episodes for you to listen to. So, uh, yeah, we'll keep you busy for a long time. Um, haven't done a video in a while. Kind of have some good reasons, but I don't have good reasons. Um, usually when I do... <laughs> And RV Talk Radio, I tend to stir up some feathers, and I'm probably going to do it again in this show. But I am very, very thankful to have you listening to RV Talk Radio. Glad to be back. Uh, I'm not going to have a guest today. Um, today, I'm going to just talk about RVing a little bit, tell you a little bit what me and Sherry are up to, and probably rant a little. And because, uh, yeah, there's some interesting things. So, Let's start off with my buddy, Bob. <laughs> Good old Santa. And uh, I always, I've always had concerns on that scenario. Good and bad. And I'll cover good with bad. But the one thing is, I always consider it a cult. And after watching a few videos from Line Screw, from Simply RVing, and then I've caught a couple other ones. I can't remember them all. Um, they're questioning, especially after the, the last RTR that they did, um, they're questioning just his how legitimate his organization is. And also notice like the last e, uh, RTR was, in a sense, a shamble. <laughs> and, uh, um, I wasn't there. Uh, I can only go by the f video footage I saw, but it looked like... Uh, uh, he, last year he got in trouble for se selling stuff on a uh, BLM land and it looks like they had to consolidate it over to, closer to a different area where they could sell things and everything was selling, buying, donating, um, subscriptions, the whole works. And it uh, uh, seems like that's really what's on their mind. And I can't help myself, uh, but a uh, question really... Um, you know, he's got a nonprofit status. Is he uh, actually running his uh, his status correctly? I know Simply RVing was questioning uh, the representative of his uh, corporation. And I want to let her know that when you own a corporation, wherever you make that corporation, whatever state you're in, you have to have somebody who lives in that state uh, be a representative of the corporation. Um, so uh, we have the same scenario. We originated out of Oregon, and uh, so our representative for our corporation is in Oregon because they live in Oregon. And uh, doesn't mean you can't have your company outside other states. It's just you got to have your representative in the state that your license is in. So doesn't mean the board of directors have to be there or anything else. They can be any way they want. So there's a little facts for you if that helps. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I wish I could figure out how to do the graphics as good as you do so I could do my arm around Bob's um, back too so we could just be buds but yeah anyway uh, uh, to make sure I'm talking about the good side of things um, you know uh, uh, there's a lot of legit reasons why people are van dwellers or living in trailers or uh, class A's 
and trying to be independent and trying to live on free land all the time. And it is the world of free this. I don't know how many commercial oh, videos I see constantly. I've been kind of knocking them off a little bit, but it's always free this. We got free camping here. This is free, 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 free. And uh, power to you. And I hope they're all great things, but I imagine it's getting a little harder out there, isn't it? And it doesn't, and in the places you're going, doesn't look like people are taking care of the area very well, are they? So, yeah, I, uh, uh, the world of free and nothing is free. Yeah, Ranger Rob's got this. And yes, he's got this too. Ranger Rob poopy bags. They're deeper, they're larger, and smell like lemon. Available at Amazon with free shipping. I told you, <laughs> nothing is free. Yes, we are sponsored by the Ranger Rob Pet Poopy Bags, and they are available at Amazon. And by the way, guys, the reason I invented those things is because when I was art traveling full time, I got frustrated when I go down trails and either uh, people would have bags that they left in the woods or they didn't bag at all. And so uh, uh, I was always trying to find bags with handles. And you can find them, but they're kind of skinny little things. So as when I had a chance to, uh, in my base area that I'm at now, uh, I actually developed a, a bag that was larger and deeper and wider and had uh, handles. And it was uh, uh, when you put your hand in and grabbed the business and reversed it, that that handle was way away from your other hand and then reversed it and tied it off. And you could easily carry it if you're hiking or something like that. So... Hey, you know, it's a, I think it's a better mousetrap. <laughs> so better, a better dog waste bag. So please, to help the channel, to help uh, all the things we do, buying Ranger Rob poopy bags is a big help to us. So yeah, appreciate that. So, uh, you know, don't mind if I throw a couple of little blurps in there about it. That's what it's for. Nothing is free. <laughs> and uh, uh, if you hang out with Bob Wells, you'll find that out for sure. I haven't uh, quite got the t-shirts yet, but I could, but we do have our uh, RV uh, travel, uh, RV talk radio hats. Uh, and uh, that'll be in the description, but you know, if you ever want a hat, you can go on Facebook page, you can find it there, but you can get those on Amazon too. So anyway, guys, uh, what's been going on? Well, what's going on with the fifth wheel you see in the background? That's my fifth wheel. And uh, that was actually the Last time we were full timing, our first stop was Ocean Shores, and it was actually in the winter. But we got some beautiful sunsets, and I did a lot of uh, uh, time lapse photography and stuff while I was out there. And then we have videos in our large uh, YouTube <laughs> library. Our YouTube has changed names; it's actually called Ranger Rob. That's it, just Ranger Rob. We put everything under Ranger Rob. Why? Because. I own the brand. I actually trademarked Ranger Rob. And it's an old nickname that I got from friends of mine um, uh, years ago. And then I also bought the domain back in 2006. So RangerRob.com is also um, uh, mine. And so uh, anyway, we thought it would be easier to just put everything I do with the Ranger Rob name on there. So even with RV Talk Radio, it's identified with Ranger Rob. So, uh, yeah, um, and yeah, it's been about two months since I've done a, an episode, and I do apologize. Um, it gets a little frustrating, and I've made, and I've told this to people before, but a lot of times we get going real good, and we get real popular again, and then people want to interview with us, and they want to do shows, and then as soon as they get what they want, they disappear and go off on their own, and, uh, and then suddenly they become the experts of everything you're doing and and uh as, and we've seen the come and goes for years now uh we've if you go through our archives you'll see a lot of folks that we interviewed before they're big stars you might say and then they kind of just we never hear back from them <laughs> so they just leave us in the dust and uh uh that's the nature um they're all so concerned about their channels and getting them built up and uh, obviously, we're, that's not our highest priority with us because 
uh, I haven't done an episode in two months. And so uh, that affects how many people watch your show and, and it affects your uh, how well you do on YouTube and all that stuff. So yeah, um, we have lots of projects going on here. We have a bunch of shows I do. Um, we actually have a new one called Ranger Rob Has Your Back where we interview people with channels and businesses and stuff like that. Um, and give them a chance to kind of be a star and, and lamplight and and those people I expect to disappear after we <laughs> done doing an interview with them. But it's a fun show to do and we do though um, we try to do an interview once a week. And uh, I think we just got done doing an interview with somebody um, from uh, Hamilton Radio, a guy named Gene, super nice guy. Our very first show for Ranger I Has Your Back was we called her the Boob Whisperer, and she uh, uh, she was a business she runs a business of uh, selling undergarments for women, and she was just so funny. So oh, uh, if you want to see a fun funny interview. Uh, go back uh, to our very first Ranger Rob Have Your Back uh, show and you get a kick out of that. Another show that we've launched, it's a half hour show, is actually called Easy Street. And that show is a little half hour show we do randomly whenever we want. It is a syndicated show on Good Talk Radio. And uh, um, it's a fun show. Sometimes we can do, well, we can do anything we want. So it's not niche. It's not one subject or the other. It can be serious which you know lately it's been a lot of serious stuff with these the, the sickness stuff going on and and so uh, uh which brings me to another subject i'm going to talk about here in a minute which i find is very fascinating and it has to do with rvs so before i go any farther i do want to dedicate this show to sandy arkari uh she sent me a very nice note saying uh rob where you been <laughs> like uh, I listened to your show and you haven't been doing shows. Uh, what's, what's up? And so, uh, anyway, um, just got a full schedule and I'm so sorry. Uh, I will try to get more shows out. My RV life may be changing actually, uh, with, uh, the addition of something else that we're adding. I'll talk about that a little later, but I wanted to mention to you that we're doing a whole lot of shows about the CV sickness and I have to abbreviate it because YouTube doesn't like that word. Anyway, I am, they are actually setting, uh, Washington obviously is having a lot of issues. And so for, uh, because of folks that have passed away and, um, and a number of sicknesses or, you know, they're talking about quarantining. What I find interesting is they're setting up these set aside areas. There's two of them. There's one in one up in Shoreline area, and then another one down by Olympia, I believe. And they're setting up this area, and they say, "Oh, we got this property. We're doing all this stuff." Turns out they're they're using RVs. <laughs> and so, hey, if you're trying to get rid of an RV, you may be able to uh, find a buyer real easy. Just contact FEMA, whatever uh, organization. It might uh, be looking for RVs at a good cost that they can quarantine people in. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody would want to buy the RV after they're done. So uh, I wouldn't donate it. <laughs> so, I mean, or loan it to them. Uh, maybe donate, yeah. But anyway, I uh, found that quite interesting. Uh, the RVs is the alternative for quarantining. So, uh, yeah, anyway, but I was going to go into the story of what's going on with my RV. So the RV you see in the background, that's mine. It's a fifth wheel. And uh, you probably remember a lot of people that follow our stuff in September, Sherry lost her father. We kept our RV up in central Oregon because we live in Arizona um, because every time we went up there, we'd go up for a week or two and every year our vacations, or sometimes we do two vacations in the same year was always central Oregon. That's why you saw a lot of videos from central Oregon because we we're actually kind of just watching her parents taking care of them. And we had the fifth wheel there as a like backup in case we needed to go up there. And for almost two and a half years, we had the RV up there. And, and it was a good deal for us, too, because we didn't have to pay for storage. We were able to keep it up there. So when we went to go visit, it was like visiting uh, a home because when we get in our fifth wheel, it's very familiar to us. We've lived in it for months and months and year, well, years, actually. And so it's a second home. Well, unfortunately, the purpose that we put that up there for happened and 
um, in September or a little more than a half a year ago where Sherry's father passed away. And uh, so through all that time, we're uh, kind of trying to decide um, how to support her mom. And we actually came up with a plan of bringing her down to uh, uh, Arizona because she kind of wanted nicer weather. And uh, she stayed with us for a while, but we had her set, get her set. We got her set up in assisted living, and which was ideal because she really needed that. And she's, uh, they were well funded and uh, uh, prepared for something like that for it, whether it was both of them or just one of them. So uh, uh, she's under the best of care. She's only two blocks away. Uh, Sherry uh, uh, is there for her whenever uh, in me, um, whenever she needs us. Uh, doctor's appointments and stuff. Just because you have a, a a mother, father, and assisted living does not mean that the jo your job's over. <laughs> You're still the, helping them out. So anyway, so the RV is up up in Central Oregon still, and we have to go up there one more time because we're gonna all fly up and have a memorial. We wanted to wait because it was winter time. It was coming in. The weather is bad. It was not a good time to have big father, family gathering, and there was a lot of confusion of what, what are we going to do. And so uh, uh, we still have the RV up there. And uh, so uh, in uh, closer to late spring, we'll be going back up to the RV, and I'm sure we'll be doing videos from about that, uh, taking her mother back up there for the weekend and uh, having all the families from the different states um, kind of getting together for a family uh, old memorial for her father. Um, and, uh, we, you know, you never know how it's going to go with this CV stuff going on, the sickness stuff. Um, that might get messed up a little bit, but we'll have to see how it goes. But, yeah, we'll be re reunited with our fifth, uh, fifth wheel. But that's not the end of the story. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. Okay, we're back. And once again, I want to thank the uh, Ford Refrigeration Group. Um, good organization. I have used their s services before. Um, I haven't I haven't gone to Kentucky, <laughs> but they had some, um, have some great training video uh, uh, videos and how-to videos about refrigeration for an RV. And then when I first bought my Montana, I was having trouble with my RV. And thanks to a lot of their suggestions and stuff, I got it fixed. I haven't had a problem since. And uh, so, uh, and they're just darn right good, nice people. So anyway, I was going to tell you, average something new coming up. Um, obviously, I told you that... Um, Sherry's folks have passed away and and um, you know with that there's things that are giving out and stuff like that well uh, one is I'm getting my truck replaced uh, eventually but the other thing I'm inheriting is a camper it's actually a very nice camper uh, very well taken care of been indoor storage the entire time uh, it's mint and Sherry and I, I've told you before, <clears throat> is we're actually been underwater on our fifth wheel. And I'm, I'm a first, I mean, I'm, a lot of people say you shouldn't let that happen. We wanted a new uh, RV. We liked the warranty. It was worth it. Um, now it's, you know, hindsight. And uh, so now, uh, you know, we make payments on our fifth wheel, but because of the way we did it at the time and 
um, hindsight again, um, it'll, it'll, we can't sell it for what we owe on it. And only time will fix that. So the best thing to do is hold on to it. And as we get older, uh, Sherry and I haven't hit the 6.0 yet. So we got a little ways to go. Um, we may be really glad we have it because we'll never be able to afford another one like it in the, in the future after that, once you get an, you know, a set income, um, when you're you know, just living off pensions and 401ks and, and, uh, social securities, uh, money's not going to be as, as good as it is when, while we're working. Um, so anyway, so what we wanted, we were kind of like to do, and we looked into it and I've talked out loud before in old shows that I wanted to trade the fifth wheel in, but because it's underwater, I just, there's no way to trade it in unless we pay big cash. And, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> uh, that's not in the cards right now. So, uh, we, uh, have this camper coming or what we wanted was to be able to do weekend trips. Uh, because we we bought a house and we have a base and we love to have a base but we love to travel still and uh so now we'll have the opportunity to do uh weekend warrior kind of stuff three day four day weekend type of stuff and uh we're kind of excited about that that's that was our goal and we can easily store a truck and camper on the side of our house here uh piece of cake but the side of my house is a, <laughs> I can't fit my fifth wheel back here because it's about three feet too long. It's a tall way of a 3625 Montana. It's a long one. We measured it, the whole works, and we can't quite fit it back there. So when we bring it home, we're going to end up having to pay for storage. So uh, I don't know when that time comes, but uh, it's kind of sad. It's just sitting there um, <laughs> in the cold, <laughs> gets snowed on every year, but uh, it's in great shape. Uh, it does need a little detailing in the outside, and I'm going to actually, well, next time I go up there, hire a, or a, a group there that does detailing uh, for RVs and then let them uh, go have at it. So I'll give them a big chicken and change to do it. I'm sure it's um, going to cost me. But yeah, it's a, uh, we love our RV. It's just our lives have changed a little. But now we'll be able to do weekend trips. I think we can still do it with Cinder. You've seen our chocolate lab and our cat if we wanted to bring her along, which won't be necessary on three-day weekends. Um, but we're excited about that because there's so many things in Arizona here we haven't really had a chance to go see or there's places we want to go back again. And uh, so, yeah, from the south where you got Tombstone and all kinds of things down Tucson area to Flagstaff area, beautiful uh, regimes up there. And I have not been in the northeast corner of Arizona at all yet. And I hear that's quite the adventure. And so, yeah. And not to mention when you go west towards California, there's a lot of neat stuff like Havasu and things like that. So there's a lot of things we'd like to do on the bucket list. And uh, having a camper will allow us to do that and still live the lifestyle we're doing today. So that's kind of exciting. Um, never hauled a camper before, but if I can do a fifth wheel, I can certainly do a camper. And uh, so yeah, it'd be exciting. And having a backup truck, um, you guys have always seen my 2002 Ford, which is running fine with this 7.3 diesel in it. I have no intentions of getting rid of that till it drops. I uh, just can't find trucks as good as that. It's a dually. So that's kind of exciting for us and we're ex excited to get it. It's gonna be a change of lifestyle and get us back into the RVing in a more, uh, uh, more commonly than what we're doing today. And I'm sure that my stories and um, uh, reports that we do will be a little bit more RV oriented, um, as you see now. Remember, RV Talk Radio is about lifestyle. We don't do, uh, occasionally we'll talk about fixing things and stuff like that, but we're more into how people use their RVs and lifestyles. And, uh, and that'll bring me back to my next subject is talking about Bob. <laughs> Back to Bob. Stop! Do you own a dog? Are you frustrated with your dog's waste bags? Then try out Ranger Rob poopy bags today. Our bags are whiter, they are deeper, they have handles and are lemon scented. Our five star rated dog bags are strong and leak proof. 
visit rangerrobpoopybags.com. We're available on Amazon and you'll love our product. Yep, that's our Ranger Rob poopy bags. And like once again, if you get a chance, uh, I did put our logo on the top of the screen, as you can see. <laughs> and things will be changing over to a lot more of like Ranger Rob's RV Talk Radio or <laughs> whatever. I'm not changing the name. It'll be RV Talk Radio. Anyway, but uh, I always have the Ranger Rob. Everything's being brought together. So, uh, um, in fact, that kind of, in a minute, I'll kind of tell you the history of our uh, YouTube channel. It's kind of interesting. For those of you who've been around a long time, you probably remember the history. But anyway, uh, getting back to the Bob stuff. Now, I know I pick on the guy, and uh, he deserved to be picked on. Um, it's like, dude, get a job. Anyway, uh, he's making good dough. And uh, uh, I've actually seen research where you can go into a tool and actually see how people are doing on YouTube and stuff. And uh, he's making good dough. And he does, uh, when he does his interviews, uh, they're awesome. And, and don't get me wrong, um, and I'm going to bring in economy and I'm going to bring in what's going on today. So here's, here's what we all need to know. I think we're on the brink of seeing another 2008 situation. Uh, it may not look the same, may not feel the same, but it's going to put us in the same position. Um, when you talk about the CV sickness out there, um, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact of uh, that it affected a, a big country that um, makes a lot of our products for supplies. And... Uh, that means there's a lot of companies that can't get their products built, which means a slowdown. And it's going to take a while. You can't, that's not something you can just say, well, we'll just start making it in America. Well, that will raise prices. That one thing that causes uh, inflation. The other part is it takes a while to get a person to develop your parts. So there's going to be a slowdown. There's going to be companies that get stopped, you know, held in their tracks. What does that mean? It means layoffs. Um, at the same time, we have this CV thing going on. And uh, once again, the reason I'm abbreviating is YouTube doesn't like that word. And so anyway, um, uh, that's causing another problem like quarantines. And um, when that happens, that means if you get quarantined, if you do it voluntarily uh, or not, you can't go anywhere. You kids can't go to school because if you got it at your house, they certainly don't want your kids at that school. You won't be able to go to work. What are you going to do for money? Or do you? Would we? I don't even know if we qualify for unemployment. Whether that's going to really help. And uh, so we got some serious, serious issues coming up soon. And so uh, it's going to devastate a lot of people because there's a lot of people just living paycheck to paycheck. Um, I'm not quite there, but it's definitely, I would feel the effects. Um, but um, what does that mean? That means, just like in 2007, 2008, people are going to start losing their homes or can't afford to pay their rent. And some of them will probably fall back to their RVs. Why? Well, why an RV? Well, the overhead's lower. Um, sometimes. Uh, if you do the math, by the way, one of the reasons we bought a house is we're playing the numbers. And, you know, we told you we bought our RV new, so we have a payment. And when you take that payment and then you add an RV resort payment on there, it was actually as much, if not more, than the mortgage we have on the current home we have. So uh, uh, if we had every shit, you know, bad stuff happen. <laughs> um, we probably let the RV go. However, um, other cases, it'd be just the opposite for some folks. Um, people don't usually have an RV quite as large and new as new as ours, and some of them bought theirs in cash. That may be the alternative home. That may make more sense to live in during times of crisis. Now, we, a lot of us right now, um, new millennials probably don't know what it was like during 2007, but a lot of us got beat up really bad. Um, 
It was not pretty. It's taken a lot of us a long time to get back on our feet. And I was one of those people. So, uh, uh, Bob, getting back to Bob, 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 is um, he's been doing great presentations about folks that are uh, on fixed incomes. And they're, you know, if you're only on disability, maybe you're, if you're lucky, making a thousand a month, you should. You are not going to be able to get an apartment worth a hoot. You can't rent a house. Living in an RV makes a lot of sense. And if you can also live without rent on the property or like an RV resort fee, um, that's why the attraction of free camping is so important to people like that. And you have to admire Someone, if their income is only $900,000 a month and they've found a way to live without being a burden to society by living in an uh, RV and keeping their costs down and, and maybe out of that $1,000, the other, oh, 600 of it, since they don't have to pay for um, RV uh, resort fees and stuff. Uh, can afford to feed themselves or go to the doctors when they need to and stuff like that. That you have to admire. Um, not all of them are like that. A lot of them are just bums. <laughs> but there's a lot of folks out there that are doing it because that's the best choice they could find based on the income that they make. Based And a lot of folks that are maybe on fixed income, disabilities, a vet, things like that. And uh, to me, that's admirable. And that, and that's great. Um, but there's others that are just like, they're just lazy and they don't want to work in, and get a nine to five job and trying to beat the system. Those are the ones that get me a little bit perturbed. And uh, um, if you went to visit Line Screw or some of the other folks, Simply RVing, um, they're hard workers and um, they uh, um, or have a, a they're you know they have a, <laughs> a pension like me uh, they're living uh, with the best abilities uh, with the income they have and not being a burden to society and that's awesome and then some folks just live that way because they like it um, but yeah so I get torn between the Bob Arant kind of things that he's doing. I think he's trying to, uh, you know, put this emphasis in living free and, and, and freedom. Um, I think he just likes the free part, but he's doing it at the cost of your wallet. And that's uh, not cool because everything you do with him, he's looking for money. Uh, you can't go on his website anywhere without a donation this, donation that, buy a t-shirt, blah, 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 join our uh, subscription, be on our Patreon. It's all about, he's living off of you. And you, and a lot of you guys, can't afford to be paying for Bob. You need to pay for yourself. Take your little Bob fees and go buy yourself a, a, good, a <laughs> nice dinner. <laughs> or fill up your gas tank. But Bob doesn't need it. He does great on his YouTube channel. And the rest of it is uh, because of his unordinary bookkeeping system. Uh, he has a questionable thing of where all that money's going. And uh, I, I I question it. That's all I'm saying. And uh, there doesn't seem to be a way to penetrate it. And apparently his taxes aren't available to see. They need to be seen. So uh, I do question that. And what he's really doing is is um, taking advantage of you. And uh, at first when he was starting out, I think he was just kind of, he was really into what he was doing and I, I give him thumbs up. But as later as he, he's just gotten boom, buried in, oh, let's start an organization and let's do this and all that. But the bottom line, he's trickling money out of you. To make his life better now guys don't get me wrong if you're happy with a channel you watch and you really like the shows they do and stuff like that by all means 
give them a little change, help them out. Cause all this does cost money. Just like we're selling poopy bags. We have a product and that product makes a profit and that profit goes towards all the little things we do, including me and my wife's re retirement in the future. No secrets about that. Um, we're not undermining you. Um, and, and it's not, and sometimes I see commerce was well, my business where I want to spend my money. Absolutely. Totally agree. So you trolls chill out. I'm just saying some people don't realize they think they're doing a good thing, but they're not. But, um, uh, just make sure you know what that's you're doing. If you like, well, us, you buy poopy bags, you know what you're getting. You're getting poopy bags. <laughs> And if you donate to the channel, we're very grateful. And if you buy a hat, cool. Uh, hats, we don't make much money. Uh, it's more of a hype thing. So anyway, yeah, we're all doing it. We all have something, but um, let's make it clear. I don't need it for a living. Uh, and I'm not hiding the money. And I don't have a nonprofit organization to uh, have to be uh, report my numbers to. Um, anyway, so yeah, if you are perfectly comfortable donating your money and funds and subscriptions to and membership fees to a guy like that power to you. Um, but all we ask, all I'm just saying is, is, you know, you should always know if you're getting good value and, 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 and are you really getting what you asked for? And, uh, in, in some cases I see is actually trying to give some money away to people I don't know how you make those decisions. So, no, that's not vodka I'm drinking. So anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's. Uh, I notice also uh, was it living free? How did he end up back at uh, the slabs? <laughs> Is life that bad? <laughs> I mean, he's, and then I caught one of his videos. He's got this beautiful fencing around this stuff. I can't wait till the first windstorm comes, but uh, it's quite impressive. Um, man, it's just, uh, just never stops, does it? Just keeps living that. Um, I, I, I was around watching those guys when they were actually some of the first ones to do videos. And um, boy, they've stuck with it, but it's not the same world that it was. I think it was back when uh, 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 Fanatic was doing stuff. There's another guy. Uh, um, um, I can't remember his name. Uh, has uh, eyesight issues. He's had quite the uh, drama of life. And then there's Living Free. Um, why can't I remember that name? Anyway, and, there, and there's been quite a few that have come and gone since then. And so, yeah, it's been a while. I think... Uh, uh, I, um, travel in the back roads is a, oh, I think that's what was the name of it. Um, anyway, there was this guy back in 2006, 2007 that actually started making videos and he was like one of the first ones living on the outskirts, dry, traveling in the outskirts or something like that. It was kind of interesting. I stayed subscribed to him for 10 years. Hasn't done a video yet. They just disappeared off the face of the earth. So 10 months ago, he actually made a video and uh, looked totally different. He had beard and long hair there. And now he's all, um, he, you know, they have a, a business now. And, and he's, uh, he was a web designer back then. But um, anyway, uh, they have a nice little home. They're actually adopting some kids. Totally different life. Uh, and he got on and he goes, yeah, I just never thought about it and i thought i'd finally get on the uh, youtube and and tell you what happened to us and what's been going on in the last 10 years and uh it was kind of refreshing kind of a happy thought kind of sad well not sad really life changes and uh some people it doesn't seem to change at all <laughs> but as you grow up and life um, develops and matures around you you you'll change with it so i always question the young folks that are out there wanting to travel so soon is like you got a lifetime ahead of you there's there's life to be lived before you go travel in an rv um there is something to say about stability and getting uh, uh learning skills and, and 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 having children and and, and going through the, the motions because it develops you as a person 
and makes you appreciate uh, the world a little more. And uh, it's always nice to have a little family there too. And uh, then I watch some of these folks that are trying to do this RV life with children and power to them. Um, and, and by the way, um, I've done shows on this before. The ones that do the homeschooling stuff, I don't blame them. Some of the stuff going on with school districts and this core, uh, common core stuff, I don't blame you guys for wanting to do your own school. <laughs> oh my goodness. And by the way, on Good Talk Radio, we have uh, Dr. Duke show from the Freedom Project who uh, um, tries to make people aware what this common core issues are with it's teaching our kids. So those of you that are homeschooling your kids, power to you. I can certainly see why you're doing it. So uh, anyway, those that was just kind of the things I wanted to bring up. I also want to kind of bring back some old memories, some old video stuff. I see you know, um, uh, Nomadic Fanatic. He's still out doing his thing. Um, <laughs> it'll be interesting how long they last. Maybe we'll do it forever. Um, you kind of almost w hope that they can see some other things in life other than you know, there's one thing to be able to run the dream of being able to do the traveling. And then there's another one is like, there's a lot of things from not traveling that's kind of nice too. And uh, you're missing out on that. So you guys are all doing videos of saying, come on out here, follow me, live the freedom. And then there's others are saying, okay, get off the road, come join society. And, and there's good things about that too. Would you like better radio with great talk shows? and great music and less garbage good talk radio is your choice we have great programming great music and a great attitude we love our country we love our listeners good talk radio there he goes again talking about that good talk radio and it's like what the heck is that and what it is is it's a full-time radio station we actually own our own radio station good talk radio we actually own something a step up from that. We own Cutting Edge Radio Network. This show is under Cutting Edge Radio Network, along with all those other shows I've talked about in the past. Anyway, Good Talk Radio is a 24-7 radio station with talk shows from all over the United States. And we play music, too, which has a music license to do so. And so... Uh, uh, in the description, we'll actually have a way that you can listen to Good Talk Radio through your Alexa. You can listen to it, uh, to it through your, uh, your cell phone, your PC. Um, yeah, uh, it's, 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 it's a great way to listen to a radio station without all that junk in it. It's either got uh, talk shows that you'll love, they, all kinds of talk shows. Some are a little political, some are... Uh, outdoorish some are um we even have a guy that does uh metal detecting we also saturdays we have uh uh up up north journal which is a uh, hunting um over in michigan area we've got all kinds of subjects amazing stuff a lot of doctor and nutrition shows uh we also talked about uh dr duke who has a regular show with us um who talks about uh, uh schools and universities and and um uh core uh i, I went blank on that <laughs> uh the issues that schools are having nowadays of uh, our core curriculum so uh common core i'm sorry that's the word i was looking for anyway so great show there's a bunch and we have djs too uh the shuffle we have also i actually have my own radio show for music it's called the ranger rob rednecks rural the world show um yeah it's a fun station and lots of stuff on it so the best thing you do is go to goodtalkradio.com go to the schedule on the website and see what shows you might like and you'll find also rv talk radio plays on the weekends so uh that's what Good Talk Radio is. It's a way to listen to shows that um, if they have a show that plays in the morning regularly someplace on Facebook and they are syndicated with us, you may be able to catch that show, say, in the evening when it's more available to you, a better time. So uh, 
if like I said, if we take it, we may take a morning show and move it up to the afternoon or evening so you can hear it because of your work schedule and things like that. At nighttime, we play great uh, classic rock, um, easy listening, uh, so you can actually play us when you're uh, going to sleep. And uh, then uh, during the afternoons, we play regular classic rock, but we put a little twist on it. So uh, uh, yeah, lots of good music. Um, check it out, Good Talk Radio. Um, and also, if, if some reason you decide to do your own podcast and you do it on a regular basis, um, you know, if you ever want to be syndicated, you can approach us, talk to us about it. Um, uh, there's things you need to know, like you got to be consistent. You have to do shows. You have to stay within a certain time frame. If you're willing to do that kind of stuff, but you could reach a, a bigger base by getting syndicated by radio stations like ours and many others. And we've helped launch a lot of people from the beginning and now they may have syndicated with us as their first station. And then now some of them have got 14 stations are syndicated on. So uh, yeah, it's uh, we're all building blocks in one another. We all help each other. So yeah, check us out. Good Talk Radio. So another subject I always want to talk about is, uh, uh, and I get kind of, uh, I don't know if you get any of you guys watch that one uh, guy named Rob. Uh, I think his channel's called uh, Little House on the Road, and uh, he uh, does actually very informative uh, videos. Uh, definitely tells the truth as he sees it, and uh, it's a good show to learn a few things about whether you want to be nomad or not. Now, my my. Uh, thing I've learned from him is is uh, a lot of the places you're staying at that are free BLM land it's being abused and not taken well care of and so you're seeing your freedoms lost a little bit at a time uh, now you're starting to pay fees for staying in areas people are leaving garbage a lot of people are using not using the bathrooms or taking you know taking that stuff out uh, hey you can use Ranger Rob poopy bags for that by the way Anyway, uh, uh, so our freedoms are being lost. The, the nomads are feeling the pinch. And uh, a lot of them say, oh, no, it's not us. But um, someone needs to police, police these people. And so it's unfortunately up to you nomads that are out there in the BLM lands and the free national park stuff that if you can help police or help uh, uh, let people know that, hey, you're ruining it for all of us. But I did want to bring up the fact is, you know, RV resorts are a lot of fun. I don't know how many people have hesitated. And the reason I know so much about them is I'm in, I'm in Arizona. This is like the mega park of, um, country. <laughs> and this is where people come. Uh, and a lot of them, uh, they love to come to the RV, uh, these mega re resorts, because there's so much to do. It's endless and so many new friends that uh, it's it's like a party every year here for old people <laughs> and and not so old. Anyway, um, so some folks, they like it so much that eventually they quit bringing their RV and they just buy a park model or some people leave their RVs down here the whole time. Um, yeah, there's a cost, um, but it's worth it. I mean, uh, if you're into uh, get togethers and dances and outings and doing things together and getting uh, some common friends, you're bound to find a, a couple or two that you're going to click with um, and enjoy what we have to offer here in Arizona during our, uh, our late early winter um, a lot of folks get here by october november and they leave around march um sometimes april depending it doesn't get that hot till may um there's so much to do here it's so relaxing and and by the way you'll f you'll you'll forget where you put your jacket because you'll just don't need it that often and uh I, it's so funny now that i live down i'm from washington so uh in oregon and uh you know how you kind of get comfortable having those layers on and having a coat on all the time? It's kind of a security blanket. 
Well, after you break that habit, which takes a while, by the way, it's funny to just get into the car with just a you know regular shirt on and go to the store. It's just in fact, the only time you might get cold around here is when you go into a a store or restaurant that's got the air conditioning on too high. <laughs> it's this is weird, and pretty soon it's like when you put a jacket on, then you start squirming, going, "I feel restricted." Um, it's weird. It takes a while, but if you're, you guys know what I'm talking about. When you get up north, you're kind of used to that layer. Kind of, that jacket's kind of like a blanket. <laughs> a little comforter that you carry everywhere. And then you got to learn down here, you just don't wear jackets. Um, maybe a sweater once in a while. But, uh, or something light, you know, windbreaker, but even that can get kind of warm. And uh, so, yeah, it's a, it's a nice thing. These RV resorts are awesome. And uh, they have a lot of things you can do between uh, pools and activities and pool, uh, pool uh, playing pool and swimming pools and, and then all the uh, other kind of um, games and stuff that people play down there. And then there's some folks who just like cards and bingos. And um, no, that's not what everybody does a lot of people are traveling every weekend checking out all over oh man talk about re uh, if you're looking for restaurants and new kinds of food to try come on down here uh, there's places to go if you want to be cool weather just go north if you want high weather go south if you want to head for the ocean go over to california for a day and um, yeah, and then beautiful. I haven't been there yet, but I like to go to New Mexico. Here are some beautiful things there. So uh, guys, there's something to say about these resorts. And yes, they cost money. Um, but uh, you can have a very nice lifestyle. Just um, if you got a base and you still have something up north in colder weather and you can do both. That's wonderful. If you want to move down here, it's a beautiful place to live. I know you hear about the really hot weather we have, but it's only for three months. And then we have nine months of summer. And we don't have six months of gray clouds and drizzle like Washington State. Uh, that's depressing. And it's really hard, by the way, if you live here and go back up there. That Those gray clouds, even when we get gray clouds here for a day... <laughs> or two, you can feel your whole spirit going blah. <laughs> anyway, but uh, uh, yeah, check out the mega resorts. If you haven't gone to one before, try it and then and chill out. Once you get parked, yeah, you know, it could be as many as a thousand units in some of those places up to 2000. And but it's a party. Um, yeah, there's grumpy old farts there too. But um, there's so much to do and you just you got to just participate and you'll find you'll get you'll meet new friends have new activities and you'll have something to really look forward to when that icky winter hits up north and you need a place to go uh arizona come check us out seriously when she wakes up i've got a surprise for her she better have some ranger rob poopy bags have a better experience with dog waste bags. Available at Amazon. <laughs> okay, guys, I know I'm being relentless. Don't forget, if you got a dog, please, uh, to help our channel, to help all the radio shows we do, all the things we do, we just like to exchange a little bit of your money for a great dog waste bag. And that's the Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. And there's... a uh, basically three different boxes here. The one in the center is what we call sheets. Those are the ones that are just individual sheets, 120 for two months. And then the one in the little pink box is a one month supply, but it comes with a fabric uh, dispenser, which is really cool. Uh, Cause our bags are bigger. You gotta have a bigger uh, dispenser. Anyway, those things uh, have little Velcro strips that are attached to your uh, leash, has a little clip you can put on your belt whatever and then the red one off to the left and those are seeing the video version of this <coughs> is uh the roll refills which is a two-month supply and uh yeah we started out with just the sheets <coughs> excuse me and uh i'll live um and then some other people say 
Well, I'd buy those in a heartbeat if they're on rolls. So six months later, we developed rolls, which was not that easy because our bags are different. They're not like all the other bags. So we had to have special dies designed um, before we could even make them to go on to rolls, uh, which was not a cheap process. But we're very glad to have now the sheets and rolls. So, uh, yeah, guys, uh, if you like uh, really good bags and... Uh, um, the sheets are under $10. The refills are under $10. The ones with the dispenser, the first one-time cost is $11.95. Um, but you'll never have to buy that one again because you just buy the refills in the future. So very cost-effective. Um, we made them affordable. Yet you get much more for your money and, uh, and just as many. So uh, go to Amazon right now. Stop the video. Pull up Amazon. Type in Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. It's a cute name. You got to love the name, guys. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Um, and uh, get yourself a box. And I know you you might be traveling at the time. Have them shipped to wherever you're at. You'll be glad you did because those cheap bags you get at the parks or the ones you buy at the store, they suck. And that's why I didn't, I didn't create these because, um, well, because I hate those things. Um, they're terrible bags, and some of them you can't turn inside out very well. You can't tie them off very easily. Uh, and our bags are super flexible, super strong, leak proof, smell like lemon. They're awesome. So help us out. Help yourself out. Get yourself some Range Raw poopy bags. If not, they make a great gift for your friends. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Anyway, guys, it's getting towards the end of the show here. Um, uh, I know it's been a while since we've done this show. I want to thank everybody for those who have been sending us notes saying, Rob, <laughs> are you going to do any more shows? Yes, we're going to do more shows. And uh, besides, uh, this show syndicated to other radio stations, and they expect us to get some shows out. So here's one for them, and here's one for you. And guys, uh, if you're RVing now, be safe. Uh, uh, enjoy yourselves. Um, take care of the places that you're staying at. Enjoy, uh, take care of the environment. Take care of the free lands that you're staying on. Um, be happy. Uh, but also remember, hey, come on back to <laughs> come back to the community. If you need to get off the road a while, it's a good life here too. So guys, uh, uh, we'll catch up with you. Uh, we uh, we have a lot of changes coming up in a few months. And uh, we'll actually be producing more travel shows. And uh, well, that'll be fun. So uh, anyway, guys, I hope we had fun today. Hope you enjoyed the show. Please leave your comments. Um, if you yay, nay, or bad, or whatever, good, bad, or ugly, just be professional. We appreciate that. But most of all, we love you guys. And thank you so much for supporting RV Talk Radio. Until next time, bye now. Thank you for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over. Then go down to the description and think about becoming a member of our Patreon. This will allow you to get special content just for you and help us build future content. Thank you.